Hi, so today we're going to talk about a little history, a little LGBT history. So where did this movement start? Well, it didn't start in the 1800s and certainly didn't start in the early 1900s. It started in the summer of 1969. What happened then? Well, in New York, there's a bar called the Stonewall Inn. And this bar was frequented specifically by genderqueer young men, transgender people, cross-dressers, and, you know, escorts and, um, and some uh, homeless youth. But, but those were less important. The, the patrons were these uh, genderqueer individuals. Many people think that um, the police had a crackdown on these people because they didn't like them. In actuality, the mob ran, the mafia ran the bar. And there was a point when the mafia, or actually when the police department decided the mafia wasn't giving them a large enough cut from all the blackmailing they were doing of the patrons of the bar. So the police say, you know, well, screw this, we're shutting them down. So they go and they shut them down, whereas usually where there were raids, someone would get informed, uh, and then the bar staff would then tell the patrons, hey, there's going to be a raid, everyone out. But in this particular time, they didn't believe that there was going to be a raid, so they didn't send everyone out. And the result was the police came in and actually raided the place, and violence broke out. And although this all started about, you know, mafia and paybacks and blackmail, the queer gendered people that were patroning the bar decided this was the final straw, that they would not be subjugated anymore, that they would strike out and they would not remain in the shadows. So riots broke out all around the country. And then later on, a year later, everyone from that community decided to come um, to pay tribute to what happened on that day by having a parade, a pride parade. And one of the people, the leaders of the organization back then was a bisexual by the name of Brenda Howard. So that is how the pride movement started. And that's how the LGBT movement started. And But the acronym LGBT wasn't included until 1988 or 89. So if you think about it, rap music was created before the LGBT movement was. Okay, so um, that's how it was created. What has been the results? Because clearly back in 1969, everyone was starting out like at a level playing field, right? Lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender people, they're all starting at zero. Let's look at the numbers. Since 1970, in the 40 years that followed, we know that $34 million have been devoted specifically to gay male services. Well, you know, that's great, that's awesome, right? Lesbian services? $30 million. Transgender services? Well, $16 million. Not bad, but still not great. Bisexuals? $84,000. $84,000 in the 40 years since 1970 compared to $34 million. So clearly, when it comes to money and services, bisexuals haven't exactly won in the LGBT community, right? But I mean, there are other ways of determining the benefits that bisexuals get from being a part of the LGBT movement. Specifically, like coming out, right? That's very important. Back, um, back in the day, 1969, barely anyone was out to the people who were most important to them. But, but, now, today, 75% of gay people are out to the most important people to them. Isn't that awesome? Congratulations to them. And bisexuals, a third. 33% of bisexuals are out to the most important people to them. So once again, in this case, bisexuals really haven't benefited the way everyone else has benefited. And that's unfortunate. But, but there's got to be another way. Like, like, more important than coming out, more important than money and services is actually suicidality. Suicidality is when a person thinks about suicide or attempts suicide. And that's got to drop, right? Well, what we know is back in the day, in the 70s, there were a lot of people who found out were gay and then either um, attempted suicide or thought about suicide. But in the current, in the latest decades, that number has dropped dramatic, dramatically. And more important than that, once a gay person passed, passed their youth, the, the percentage of people who think about suicide and attempt suicide drops even more. That is fantastic. And bisexuals attempt and think about suicide at three times the rate of gay people. And the difference is that when, a, when bisexuals become adults, those numbers don't change. So we have the LGBT movement. We have certain groups, in fact, 
all of the other groups benefiting tremendously and bisexuals not benefiting at all. Okay, so why do you think that could be? Could it have something to do with the acronyms involved with the LGBT movement? There's lesbian, there's gay, there's, there's bi, and there's trans, which is odd. Like for a person in 2016, it sounds odd to your ears because it's like three sexual orientations and a gender expression. What? That doesn't... But I did do a video last week where I talked about how gay and lesbian is actually the major characteristic of both of them is they are genderqueer expressions, right? So is it three genderqueer expressions and one sexual orientation being bisexual? Does that sound right? No. Let's go back in time. Let's go back down to the 1969 and the 1970s. Who is the most recognizable bisexual figures at that time? Well, I mentioned Brenda Howard. Here's a picture of Brenda Howard back when she was young. Now let's think about the most famous bisexuals in the world at the time. Well, there's Freddie Mercury. Here's a picture of him when he was at the peak of his fame. And here's a picture of David Bowie. Do any of these people seem, oh, I don't know, genderqueer to you at all? So let me ask you. Is LGBT a combination of three genderqueer categorizations and one sexual orientation? Or is it a group of four genderqueer groups? At least in the mind of the people who create the organization. Okay. Well, maybe that has something to do with the fact the way the community is now. But the question is, well, okay, well, that's the way it was created. That's what happened. What could we possibly do about it? Well, I suggest something. You know, in previous videos, I've talked a lot about the problem. The problem is that the gay community um, benefits much more from LGBT than bisexuals do. But it's really easy to talk about the problem. What's really hard is coming up with a solution. This time, I've come up with a solution. Stop saying LGBT and start saying LGQT. 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 Why? Why would you say that? Why would you, why would you take the B out of, uh, out of LGBT? Because from the very beginning, it was an organization for genderqueer individuals. It has always been. People looked around them and said, oh, you know what? All bisexuals that I know seem queer, so bisexuals must be queer, so let's say, let's say bisexuals. But the chat was always, we're here, we're queer, and get used to it. But are all bisexuals queer? The one benefit that has come from the LGBT movement is the fact that there have been studies done on sexuality. And that includes studies on bisexuals as well. And what have we learned from those studies? We have learned that there's a group called Mostly Straight. And what is Mostly Straight? Mostly Straight is a group of people that have feelings for people of the opposite sex, but have less feelings for people of the opposite sex. And they choose to use that identity. In fact, they have invented that identity to represent themselves as such. What is the difference between a person identifying as mostly straight, identifying as bisexual? It's that queerness. It's that gender queerness. So what do we have? We have the vast majority of bisexuals refusing the bisexual label and uh, choosing to identify as mostly straight. There you have another benefit of the LGBT movement, the separation between bisexuals. Well, okay, that is my suggestion, that we stop saying LGBT and we start saying LGQT, because that is what it was always meant to be, and in actuality, that's what it is right now. But are there other benefits? Like, are there real benefits to, let's say, the queer bisexual, because I'm sure there are a lot of queer bisexuals right now going, oh my God, my chest is hurting, the idea of us being withdrawing from the gay community. Let's really think about this. Let's say that you're a woman and you have, you enjoy dating lesbians, right? What is the biggest pet peeve about bisexual women that lesbians have? Is it possibly that women who claim to be bisexual will date women for a short stint, then go back and uh, start dating men? Well, as we all know, that's completely true. That stereotype is 100% completely true. Why do you say I'm sure there's a number of queer bisexuals losing their mind right now? 
But think about it. The majority of people on the bispectrum are mostly straight. 75% of women on the bisexual spectrum are mostly straight. What does mostly straight mean? It means you prefer men. That means that the majority of women on the bisexual spectrum have an interest in women, they're exploring those interests in women, unless there's something that grabs them incredibly, they decide to go back to the preference that they enjoy the most, which are men. That's what bisexuals do. That's who we are, and you know what? God damn if that is not a wonderful thing to experience. I can tell you as a guy who is mostly straight, I enjoy being with guys. But you know what I really enjoy? Being with women. So no matter how many times I'm with a guy, the odds are that I will end up with a woman. It's not just me, it's 66% of bisexual men and 75% of bisexual women. It's time that we stop tiptoeing around this fact and just embrace this as who we are. This is who we are. And if anyone wants to deal with us, they're gonna have to deal with that. That's what being bisexual means. It means that we get to choose and that we actually have a preference, the majority of us, and that preference is the opposite sex. So what is a lesbian to do? Is the lesbians just supposed to suck it up and take that fact and they're supposed to date bisexuals knowing that, you know what, when we're done with you, we're gonna go and date the preference that we actually want. Or are our lesbians gonna just continue to be resentful towards that idea and to continue to reject bisexual women? Well, here's an idea. How about we stop saying that all bisexuals are queer. How about we start saying that, yes, there's a group of bisexuals that are actually more connected to the lesbian gay community than they are to the straight community. Yes, it's smaller, but there's a name for those people, and they are specifically queer bisexuals. So dating bisexuals might be troublesome for lesbians, but dating a queer bisexual is dating someone that wants to be with a lesbian. How much better do you think the lesbians would feel about dating bisexual women if they knew that was the case? How much better of a chance would you have of landing your, the lesbian of your dreams if you stop saying that all bisexual women are queer? Okay, that's just one benefit. Let's talk about safe spaces. Let's talk about LGBT centers. Well, LGBT centers are supposed to be for all people in that acronym, right? But now that we have the studies that show that 70% of bisexuals are actually mostly straight, and before that, I mean, even the people who just identify as bisexual, 84% of those people are in opposite sex relationships. So that means that if bisexuals in our totality decided to embrace LGBT centers, and, you know, since LBG, LGBT centers are places where, uh, you know, gay people are allowed to be themselves and to take their boyfriends and girlfriends and not have to worry about being scared about who sees them or have to, like, overthink, like, there, there's no triggering going on with breeders and all that stuff. They can just be who they are. What happens when all of us bisexuals, all the majority of the bisexuals, start taking our girlfriends and our boyfriends to the LGBT centers, and we start snuggling up to them, and we start kissing them, because isn't that what we're supposed to do here? Isn't this supposed to be a place where we can be ourselves? Isn't this supposed to be a place where we can be who we are? How do you think the lesbians and the gays would like that? You know what? Safe spaces are important for lesbian and gay people. There are not a lot of spaces in this world where they can be with other people like themselves and they can feel safe expressing who they are and coming into their own. They need these spaces. So what does that mean? Does that mean that bisexuals should just censor ourselves and we shouldn't go there because, you know, even though it's called LGBT, it's really for lesbians and gays? Or do we just call it what it is, which is these are LGQT centers. These are communities where people who are ostracized, who have been picked on, who've, who have not fit into society very well can go and feel at home and meet other people like themselves. You know, other queer folk like themselves. Not bisexuals like me and my girlfriends and my, and my tongue kissing and all that stuff in public, but queer bisexuals who might have a hard time coming out. Could you see how perhaps if this were the case, 
gay and lesbians might be less resentful towards bisexuals, that they don't have to embrace people like me and instead can embrace people like you, queer bisexuals. Certainly I can see that. So how about instead of saying LGBT, we start saying LGQT. LGQT, LGQT. Let me say this. There are two types of thinking. There's old people thinking and there's young people thinking. Old people thinking is when, let's say, a queer person, queer bisexual, looks around and sees nothing but queer people on the side of them and then looks around and sees that the land looks flat and decides two things, that all bisexuals are queer and that the earth is flat. What do young people think? Well, young people aren't sure of the answer, but what they do is they go to Google and they look it up and find out the actual answer. Old people thinking is just saying, you know what, this is the way we've been doing it since 1988, and this is the way we should continue doing it, even though it's not working, even though suicidality is still really high, even though bisexuals aren't identifying as bisexual, even though all the things are happening the way they're happening, we can't give up on this because this is the way we've always done it since 1988. That's old people thinking. New people thinking is, if it's not working, let's just change it. LGQT, LGQT, LGQT. All you have to do is say it. You don't have to fight with anyone about it. You don't have to proclaim it. All you have to do is instead of saying LGBT, say LGQT, and you will start a revolution. Not just for bisexuals, not just for queer bisexuals, but for gay people too. And if you're gay or you're lesbian, you're watching this, think about how good that would be to feel, to say. Think about how it would feel to not have to include breeders like myself, the mostly straight bisexuals, the bisexuals that go in, have sex with women, have sex with men, and then go back to the, to the sexual preference they want. Think about how it would feel to not have to feel resentment about how easily we transition between the queer community and the straight community, how easy it is for us to fit in wherever we want to fit in. Think about how good it would feel to be able to say LGQT and be able to create a group of people who are actually suffering or, or actually feel they, like they need a community of actually people who think like you. Think about how good that would feel. And of course, think about how it would feel to have an acronym that sounds like people are calling you cuties. LGQT. So, if you're bisexual, say LGQT. If you're gay, say LGQT. And share this video. Share it on Facebook. Share on Reddit, on Reddit, share it in gay spaces, share on gay websites. This is something that benefits everyone. Gays, queer bisexuals, and then bisexuals get to actually embrace the label without the hindrance of a gender expression that does not fit us. So again, if you like this video, please click a thumbs up, share it, and I do many videos on bisexual topic, but oh, I don't do them on a regular basis, but I do do them frequently. So if you want to know when a new video comes out, you have to click on that little notification, notification switch that says, let me know when a new video comes out. Until the next video, stay cooler, my bisexual friends. Stay cooler. Bye.